Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we are on part three of our series of painting these two landscape paintings. Today we are adding detail with a fun little dry brush technique and just tying up some of those loose ends. So let's jump right in and get started. Okay, welcome back to part three of our video series. Today it's all about just adding those little details. So with this, we're gonna do a little bit of like a fun dry brush technique, just to add a little bit more to the water and some highlights maybe on the trees, just a little bit, not too much to this painting, but this one is where we're gonna do more detail of some of the flowers in the front, maybe, you know, enhancing our sunlight a little bit, but that's about it. So let's start here. I'm gonna show you a quick technique called the dry brush technique which I really really love and our water looks pretty flat we created some waves but to create a little bit more texture in our water it, you can use something called the dry brush technique so my brush has been wet it's damp but there's no really water in it so what I'm gonna do there's some paint in my palette here I'm gonna make sure my brush is really dry like it dry-ish and I'm just gonna kind of dab like this then I'm gonna dab it back on my paper towel and all I'm gonna do is put it on its side and skim it across the water a bit and this creates this texture called dry brush you essentially have like a dry brush and what it does especially with cold pressed paper is it picks up the toothiness texture of the paper and only paints on those sections and it just it's a really nice kind of technique to use for texture. Ooh, that was too much. That's okay. For tech for texture in your paintings. So try and be a little bit loose with it. But especially for water, you can get those really nice little water ripples without um you know spending the time creating too many of them. So I like to do that in my water just a little bit. So that's that. Um totally up to you even if you want to do it a little bit with the green for some of the reflection you can do that so that's that and then some highlights you can add if you want to like in my last video I showed you my Dr. Page Martin bleed proof white um, you can always add a little bit of white opaque paint to some of your watercolor and you can just create some lighter highlights on some of your trees And it just kind of helps just pick a side and just tap a little bit of a highlight on some of those branches. I'm using like a green gold kind of mix with my white. This is my favorite white paint to use, but you can use gouache, whatever you have just to add a little bit of highlight to some of these trees. And then I might just in the water create a little bit of a white highlight right against the, the water line. And you can even do some highlights in the water with your white if you like. Okay, it just helps bring it to life just a bit more. You can smooth it out with your finger. You could even do like little flex, like some um, flex from the sun, just on the tips of the the peaks is where you would see them, kind of on the lighter parts, just for a little bit of sparkle on your water. Just little bits of detail like that are always fun to do. Okay? And it just kind of brings it all together a bit more when you add those little bits of highlight and sparkle. So that's that painting. I'm not going to touch it anymore. Oh no, I lied. I'm, I said I was not going to touch it anymore. Um, if you want to make your clouds even a little bit fluffier, you can always add some white paint. Just kind of 
not too, too much, but just a little bit of fluffiness to some of the clouds. Just trying to be a little bit rough with it. Leave some darkness of where we lifted the paint because when we lifted the paint, it was never like stark white underneath, right? But just a little bit of that and we're doing the dry brush kind of thing. I'm not adding water necessarily to my paintbrush while I'm doing this. I'm just kind of using a bit more of a drier technique. So it's a bit fluffier, more textured. But that's totally up to you if you want to do this. Do some smaller. Also with clouds, the further away they are, uh, the closer to the horizon they are and the smaller they are. So do them a little bit smaller. Further down they are, just helps make it look a bit more realistic. Like that. And there is our lake painting, okay? No more touching. <laughs> okay, now moving on to this one. Um, you can see that I've kind of lost a lot of that light here for our sun. So I'm just going to take my white. Like that. Maybe add a little bit of yellow to my white just so it's a little bit brighter. And then again, if you want to, just drag some of that lightness into the sun rays. You can do that. like that okay so there's our Sun now I wanted to get to the flowers so I'm gonna be using this for my flowers um, and using it where we kind of put some of those flecks so all I'm gonna do actually maybe I'll do it around them so it looks like there's some out-of-focus ones I'm just gonna do these really kind of simple petal shapes with my white and the flowers that are closest to us are going to be a bit bigger and as we move further back they're going to be smaller so back here they're going to be a little bit smaller right up close they're going to be bigger maybe you'll just see a side of one so like all the petals are pointing down Maybe some over here. It's totally up to you how you want to do this, what flowers you want to do. I don't want to do like a ton of flowers. I just want them mostly at the front here. And you can even just do like little dots the further away they they go. They don't have to look like full flowers. And that also helps give a little bit of depth. Okay. So I didn't do it over the flex. Those look like they're just like out of focus flowers, which I love. Okay. Then... While I'm waiting for those to dry, I want to do a little bit of the dry brush like how we did here on the grass. So drying off my brush here so it's nice and dry and I'm just going to kind of run it over whatever green I had. Just even just dip it in like my paint's not really wet. I'll tap it on my paper towel a bit and I'm just going to kind of skim it from the sides. Just to give it a little bit of a texture like that across. I just like the way that looks. And if you see my brushes, like I've, I've kind of destroyed the bristles by going like that on my paper towel. You can always fix it. You just put it in your water 
and then roll it on your paper towel into a nice point, shape it to dry, lay it flat, okay? Okay, so we did a little bit of dry brush and now these are pretty, well, they're kind of dry. Um, let's do the stems. You know what, we'll do stems on our, our flowers. I'm gonna grab some dark green and I'm just gonna use my small brush to do little stems. Now I'm not doing the full stems, just kind of like a little fleck of a line. And then I'll do like some more like leaves kind of coming out from different ways. It doesn't have to be too realistic or anything. Might even do some like long grass. But the closer it is to us, the darker the leaves are gonna be, the more in focus. So the further away it is, the less you'll see them. So I'm using darker green right up front. I'm making them fairly big. like that and then the more we move away we'll make them smaller maybe just make little grass marks like this you can even hold on you can even do that kind of PC look with your brush so just take your your brush and just like dab it kind of break up those bristles again and just do some dry brush but like strokes of grass almost to make it look full up to you okay and then the last part of that would be the center of the flowers so I'm just gonna grab some yellow and white just to make it really nice and bright but I want it to be fairly yellow in the centers And I'm just going to tap it in the center. Like that. And then I might even grab a little bit of darker yellow, like a yellow ochre. Get a little bit of darker yellow in there just for a bit of shading, just to kind of Make it look a little bit more realistic. Right underneath that yellow, like so. And there we go. So there are two paintings using a bunch of different techniques. I know this video was a lot shorter, um, but it's so much fun to do. Let me know what you guys think in the comments if you guys enjoyed this kind of series with techniques put into actual practice. Uh, with paintings and I hope you guys loved it. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed the series. Let me know if you would be interested in more videos like this, maybe with different subjects. Um, let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. Have a great day guys. Bye.